Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Caleb Downing and today we are going to be talking about how to sight in a rifle scope. Let's talk about it. Okay, so there is a lot of information out there. There are a lot of different people who have different opinions on how to do this. Some people will count clicks and things. Some people have to know those measurements and whatnot. Personally, I stopped doing that years ago, okay? Because I change out scopes and red dots and pistol optics and all kinds of stuff I on a fairly regular basis. I'm swipping, swapping parts out. It would just take too long to try to count things and just, uh, it, it, it's a mess to me, right? So I'm gonna show you how I do it. I think it's a little bit quicker. It gets you on target. It gets you where you need to be in a more efficient way, the way that I feel, okay? And again, other people might have better ideas. They might have different ideas and that's great. Try it if it works for you. If it doesn't work for you, try something else, okay? So for today's demonstration purposes, we're gonna be using an AR-10, right? I believe this is a 16 inch gun. I get it confused. I should know my own stuff, but I believe it's a 16 inch gun. Um, and we're going to be sighting it in at a hundred yards. Okay. We're going to be shooting some federal premium. I believe it's 175 grain 308 stuff. This stuff's actually pretty stinking good. And so I'm hoping I can get this on target and sighted in relatively quickly. Cause I don't want to waste that ammunition. Um, yeah, yeah. Especially nowadays. <clears throat> Okay, but knowing your ammo, what you're sighting it in for, and what ammo you're going to be using, especially as it's coming up here on deer season here before too long, don't sight this in with the cheapest stuff that you can find, right? And then go put some high dollar round in it and wonder why you're not hitting where you're aiming. Well, because you got to sight it in with what you're shooting, what you're going to shoot, right? Because bullet weights change, different companies load their ammunition to different pressures and things, and so you can't sight it in for one grain, right? For like a 150 grain and then expect your 174s or 168s or whatever to match. They might highly doubt it. So be careful about that stuff. Sight it in with what you're planning to shoot. Okay. That's the first main thing. Tool wise, you don't have to have a fancy rig like this, this whole setup, this, uh, saddle cradle, whatever you want to call it. Um, you don't have to have something like this. I, most of the time I don't use this. I will just take a backpack or some big bag and I'll just bundle it up and I'll settle the rifle down on it. And that generally works just fine. So you don't need that. It is nice to have a spotting scope. Um, today I'm going to be using this guy, um, land of this one's not mine. This is a buddy of mine's. Um, but having a, excuse me, having a higher magnification, um, spotting scope is really going to help you because if not, then you're probably going to be having to walk down range and check things and it's just, it just takes longer. Today I got my phone hooked up to it because so, I'm going to be taking video for y'all, hopefully of the target as long as it works. Um, but you don't have to have that, but it's nice to have a spotting scope. That's what they're for. Uh, a lot of times you can see stuff through your actual scope, but I think that goes up to 60 power and this scope goes, goes to 10, right? So Let's stop talking and let's get to shooting. We're going to start just to get on paper. Again, this is how I do it. We're going to start at 25 yards. I know that's really close, but all we're trying to do is get our left and right correct, right? And then we're going to purposefully be about a couple inches low. If we can be a couple inches low and perfect left and right, then I can almost guarantee that once we get out to 100 yards, we're going to be on paper. We may not be exactly where we need to be, but we'll be on paper. So let's do this 25 yards. All right, one thing to note, you got to make sure you wear ear pro. Um, I'm wearing some Surefire ear uh, defenders, I think they are, ear pros, whatever they are. They work pretty good. No problems with them at all. Especially if you're shooting a 308, you don't want to be shooting that underneath a, uh, a roofed shoot house, or whatever you want to call this, and uh, catch that noise in the face. You don't want to do that. All right, and eye pro, and let's get to this, okay? One note on these setups right here. I don't like to have this thing super strapped down, super tough, super tight, because if you're applying pressure to the rifle and bending the rifle, basically, you don't want to do that. So I just have this kind of lightly on here to keep the gun from bouncing around too much. Um, because what can happen is if you put too much pressure on the gun in the wrong way, and you get it sighted in, then when you take that strap off and you relieve that pressure, well, now the gun's not sighted in because now you've changed something. It all goes back to harmonics. Um, that plays a major role into this stuff. So try to sight it in 
the way that you're going to shoot it. Meaning if you're going to shoot it off a bag, shoot it off a bag when you side it in. If you're going to shoot it in the prone, then shoot it in the prone when you go to side it in. For, for me, for my purposes, I'm all over the place doing a bunch of different things. So I'm just going to shoot it off this rest and take out my as much of the human error as possible. Okay, now enough of that talking. Let's see where we are at 25 yards. Make sure the scope is zeroed. That's one major thing a lot of people forget to do. Just zero it out. <clears throat> All right. All right, so we're ready to roll. So what we're going to do is without bending the gun, I'm just going to try to get behind it and not be having to move the gun. The gun should be perfectly on target without me even touching the gun, okay? All I'm gonna try to do is touch the trigger and make it go off, right? I'm just gonna try to pull the trigger. That's all I'm trying to do. If I'm having to tor torque on the rifle or anything, then I'm applying a pressure to the rifle that I don't want to during the zero. Okay, so we are loaded. We're good to go. Camera's rolling. All right, 25 yards. One shot. All right, if you can see that, I'm pretty much at the bottom of the black. So what I'm going to do, I know it's probably not gonna show up in camera very well, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to line everything up. I'll try to line it up for you. All right, I have no idea how this is going to show up, but I I have this rifle in the stock in in the in the cradle, and it should be zeroed right where I had it when I fired. And hopefully at the bottom of the black, you can see where the impact is. All I'm going to do is adjust my left and right, right, to try to get that exactly lined up with the impact. So I need to move it to the right. That's the wrong way. All right, hopefully that shows up. I didn't move my elevation. I moved my windage to the, technically to the left. I always get these confused. That's why I don't count the clicks. I just watch the reticle move. So if you can see now, it looks like I'm aiming at the right side of the 10 because that is directly above that first impact or the only impact on that paper. Alrighty folks, so we are moved over from the 25 over to the 100. So now let's see if, if this is all hoopla <laughs> on camera. Let's see if it actually works. We should be on paper. That's all we should be. I'm not trying to say that I should be perfectly zeroed in at all, but we should be on paper. That's the whole purpose of the 25 yard thing is to get on paper so you don't put your target out at 100 yards and then fire 10 rounds and not know where anything's hitting. So we should be on paper. We should be able to see our impact. Okay, so same thing. I'm going to get this guy settled in to where I'm not having to twist the handle, apply any pressure. He really just needs to sit right on zero. And all I should have to do is just squeeze that trigger. All right. Okay. So hopefully you can see I'm like a foot low. So we're gonna do the same thing we did before as far as lining up the sights or lining up the scope. And then just adjusting our elevation. Okay, so here we go. We are just going to be adjusting the elevation. This, this rifle should be sitting perfectly still. I'm not putting any input into the gun. Should be rock solid, not moving. Okay, now I simply watch the reticle and I don't move the gun. I just adjust the reticle until it gets right down to my impact, okay? This takes some, some trial and error, right? Because it's very easy, very easy 
to slightly move the rifle or to do something like that. You don't want to do that. If you move the rifle as you're adjusting the optic, it just doesn't work very well. It's just not going to work. All right. You'll be chasing your, your impacts and you'll be chasing it all over the place. So that's why having a rest like this is very helpful in this situation. So let's see. Now we should be within a couple clicks of zero because we've moved our point of aim to our point of impact. We moved it. We tried to match it. So let's put one more shot down there and see where we're at. All right, my phone died, so that was really great. I hope it caught that shot. So basically you can see I'm inside the 10 ring. I'm about an inch high possibly, so I'm gonna come back down I'm at six. I'm going to come back down like one click. All right. So I'm going to see where that puts us at. One click should put us right in the middle of that X. Other than that, it's probably human error if I'm not hitting it. All right, it looks like I'm pretty much about in the same spot. So for me, at 100 yards, that's fine. For what I do out here, right, if I'm going to use this rifle to hunt or whatever I'm going to be trying to doing, trying to doing, whatever I'm going to be trying to do, accomplish with this gun, 100 yards is about as far as I can shoot out here. So having it zeroed like that, it's really just like maybe an inch high. I mean, we're within the 10 ring, but we're fine. We're, we're right there. That is fine with me. That is how I sight in a rifle. All right, guys, so some key things to go over before we shut this thing down. Um, if you have a rest, use it, okay? This, the way that I sight this in, this this style of sighting in, it doesn't require a rest, but it's very difficult to do it without it because being able to have the capacity to lock the gun down so it doesn't move, and then all you're doing is adjusting the dials, that is very hard to do if you're shooting it off a bag. It's doable, I've done it before, but it's gonna require a couple more rounds here and there to do that. So having the ability to lock it down is, is key in my, in, my, in my personal opinion, in this style of how I set it up, all right? Having your scope locked down, having everything locked down, no matter how you're sighting it in, it's, it's, it's a waste of time, right, to, to have like the scope rings slightly loose or to have some, something not on properly you spend all this time and effort and money getting it sighted in just to find out that a screw wasn't tightened down all the way and now you're chasing your zero because now every time you shoot, your reticle moves a little bit and you don't know it, but it's moving so your, your point of impact is moving like six inches every shot. You don't want to do that, okay? So make sure, for sure, for sure, everything is locked down before you even head to the range, okay? Um, if you have like quick detach scope mounts like this one has, make sure that they're pushed in properly, make sure they're exactly where they need to be, okay? I can't hammer that enough but I think I just did, so that's that's good to go. If you notice this gun wasn't cycling all the time, that's because this gun is generally suppressed, so I have it gas, the gas tuned to be suppressed. Um, that's something to take in, into consideration if you have a suppressor on the gun. If you're gonna be hunting with a suppressor, then sight it in with the suppressor because the suppressor will change your point of impact, all right? It might be negligible, but it's gonna change your point of impact. Um, but in general, that is how I do it. That's how I take a gun from having the scope off to putting the scope on. You get it on paper at 25. I could do 25 50, or 50. Generally, I try to do it closer 25 because it almost guarantees that unless you're unless you mounted your scope wildly crazy, right? You're going to be on paper at 20. So you'll be able to adjust your reticle, right? At least your windage to be zeroed and then get within a couple inches, right? Ha have your point of impact a little bit low at 25. And then when you push out all the way to 100, you're more than likely gonna be on paper because if, if you're like me, you've probably done it. You've probably gone to the range and you've shot and you've shot and you've shot. You've shot a whole box of ammo and you can't hit paper because you, you're chasing an imaginary impact. You can't see where the bullet's impacting, especially if you're by yourself and you don't have a spotter that can be watching with you, okay? So this is a way to do it by yourself. I think we fired, what, four rounds? I think, one, two, three, four, yeah. So within four rounds, we got zeroed, okay? Yes, we're just a slight bit high, but for me, like that's shooting a half dollar, basically.
it's good enough for me. All right, guys, I hope you appreciate that. I hope you learned something. Try this, all right? It's coming up deer season. I'm sure everybody's gonna be busting out their deer rifles. This is an easy way to within five rounds. In general, I can't guarantee that for you, but in general, within about five rounds, you can get your gun sighted in perfectly good for deer season or for whatever it is you're trying to do. Okay, guys, hope you enjoyed that. Y'all be good to be safe, and hopefully we will catch y'all in the next video.